Section 1.5 Solution Sets of Linear Systems A system of linear equations is said to be homogeneous if it can be written as a times our vector x equals the vector 0 where a is an n by n matrix 0 is the 0 vector in R M M space so we're going to look at this example our matrix A will be the coefficient matrix, the coefficients of x1 and x2, which will be 1, 10, and then 2, 20. And then we'll have our vector x, which is just the variables x1 and x2. And then that's equal to the zero vector, which is just a column vector of all zeros. One solution that we know is the x could be equal to the zero vector, meaning if I multiply my matrix A by zero, then I will get zeros. So we know that that is definitely a solution. So the homogeneous system AX equals zero always has at least one solution, and we usually call this solution the trivial solution. And that is the solution where we know that one solution could be the zero vector non-zero vector solutions are called non-trivial solutions. And that should make sense. We have the following fact. The homogeneous equation AX equals zero has a non-trivial solution if and only if the equation has at least one free variable. So if we look back at our previous example and we want to examine if non-trivial solutions exist, we'll look at the augmented matrix. So we're going to include our column of zeros. And we want to row reduce it. Multiply by negative 2 and add. And when we do that, we'll get 1, 10, 0, and then a row of zeros. So we see here that x2 is free. So this is consistent with infinitely many solutions. So the reason we have to have at least one free variable, if we had looked and we had ended up with a pivot in every row, because our last column is zeros, we would have ended up with saying that x1 was 0 and x2 was 0, which is the trivial solution, just the 0 vector. So since we didn't have that happening and we did have a free variable, then we know we have infinitely many solutions and that it's a consistent system. Now let's look at this example. We want to determine if the following homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions and then describe the solution set. So we know it's homogeneous because our equations are all equal to zero. And to determine if we have non-trivial solutions, we're going to write the augmented matrix and row reduce it. We can use our calculators or you can row reduce it by hand. And we end up with this matrix here. So we see that x2 is free, which means that yes, it does have non-trivial solutions. So we'll write the general solution. And we'll have x1 equals negative 2x2. x2 was free. And x3 is just equal to 0. So I'm going to rewrite this. My vector x, if you remember, was just the vector containing my variables, x1, x2, and x3. So I'm going to rewrite that replacing those with what they were equal to. So we knew that x1 was equal to negative 2x2. x2 is free, so it's just equal to itself, and x3 was equal to 0. So now what that allows us to do is to pull out x2 and we're left with a vector that has negative 2, 1, and 0. And so if I call this vector vector v, and I'm just naming it v, then I could rewrite this as x2 times my vector v. 
and this is how we would write our solution set. Now let's look at the graphical representation. Geometrically, the solution set is a line through zero in R, and so it's equal to the span of my vector V. And if you'll remember from the previous slide that we said that V was the vector negative two, one, zero. So if we label our graph here, we see that my vector V is here. And so this would be some constant multiple times V. And so then this line here represents the solutions to my homogeneous equation, which was AX equals zero. Now I want you to try. I want you to first determine if the system in the two examples here have non-trivial solutions. And if they do, then find out what they are and give those solution sets. And we'll talk about that in class. A single linear equation can be treated as a very simple system of equations. So in this example, we're going to look at this single linear equation and we're going to describe all solutions of this homogeneous system here. So I am going to treat x1 as my basic variable. I'm going to solve then for x1. When we solve for x1, we get 3 tenths x2 plus 2 tenths x3. And x2 and x3 are then free variables since we chose x1 to be the basic variable. So as a vector, my vector x, remember, just consists of my variables x1, x2, and x3. And I'm going to replace those with what we solve them to be. So I'm going to replace x1 with this equation here, 3 tenths x2 plus 2 tenths x3. Then x2 was free, so it's equal to itself. And x3 was free, so it's equal to itself. So now I'm going to split this into two vectors, one with x2 and one with x3. So I have 3 tenths x2, then x2 and 0, plus then 2 tenths x3, 0 and x3. And so now that allows us to pull out x2 from our first one and we'll have then 3 tenths 1 and 0, and we'll pull out x3 from our second one, and we'll have 2 tenths, 0 and 1. So if I call this vector u, and this vector now is my v for this example, then every solution is a linear combination of these two vectors u and v which means that the solution set is simply equal to the span of u and b. And since neither u or v is a scalar multiple of the other, then the solution set is a plane through the origin and not a line. We want to describe the solution set of this system of equations. And notice here that they're not all equal to zero, so we don't have all zeros. So that means this is a non-homogeneous system of equations. If you'll recall, in an earlier example, we looked at this exact system of equations that was homogeneous where we had a zero here in place of the four. So we're going to look at what happens to our solutions when we now do not have all zeros. So when we have the same system, but it's non-homogeneous. So I'm going to set up my augmented matrix. And here we have it. And we want to row reduce it. So we'll use RREF and row reduce. And we get this matrix. So notice still that x2 is free. 
when we write our solutions, we will have that x1 is equal to 6 minus 2x2. x2 is free. And x3 is now equal to 2. So when we write our vector x, which is the vector of our variables x1, x2, and x3, we see that x1 then was 6 minus 2x2. x2 is itself, and x3 is 2. So I can't just factor out an x2 here. I have to split off and have two vectors, kind of like we did in the last example, and we'll have 6, 0, 2, plus negative 2x2, x2, and then 0. So then we end up here with 6, 0, 2, and now I can take an x2 out of this second vector, and I'll have negative 2, 1, and 0. And if you remember, this is what we called our vector v in that prior example, and this part was the solution set when it was the homogeneous equation. But now I have a new vector that I'm adding to it, and we're going to call this vector p. So what we have then is that our solution set is the vector p plus x2 times my vector v. And this is how we can describe our solution set. So to describe the solution set of ax equal b geometrically, we can think of vector addition as a translation. So here we've got the zero vector, or the origin, and here we've got x2, v. And this line is representing the solution sets to our homogeneous equation. And what we have then is this line is representing the solutions to our non-homogeneous equation, where b in this case was equal to the vector 0, 4. And we say that this is our vector p, and so then this here would be p plus x2 times v. So given v and p in r2 or r3, the effect of adding p to v is to move v in a direction parallel to the line through p and 0. So here we have our line from v, where we've added p, and it's parallel to the line through 0, p. So then v is translated by p to v plus p here. So these would be parallel solution sets. Here's a quick recap. Our solution of our homogeneous equation, ax equals 0, we had our vector v here, and we had x2 times v, which was the parametric equation of the line passing through 0 and v. And then we had the solution of our non-homogeneous system, where b was the vector 0, 4, and we produced this, where we called this first vector p, and this was still v, where we had p plus x2 times v, and this was the parametric equation of a line passing through p parallel to v. So when a non-homogeneous linear system has infinitely many solutions, then the general solution could be written as one vector plus an arbitrary linear combination of vectors that also satisfy the corresponding homogeneous system. So what we're saying here is this was the linear combination from my homogeneous system, and notice it repeats in my non-homogeneous, plus a vector here. So here we have theorem 6. Suppose the equation ax equal b is consistent for some given b, and let p be a solution then the solution set of ax equal b is the set of all vectors of the form w equals p plus v sub h, where v sub h is any solution of the homogeneous equation ax equals 0. So this just sums up what we just looked at and saw happening in the last example.
So we're going to look at it again in a simplified form with just one equation as our system. So this first equation would be our homogeneous equation and this second one would be our non-homogeneous equation. So in both cases we're going to solve for x1 and in this case we would divide 3 by 2 and then solve for x1 and we would end up with x1 equaling 2x2 plus 2x3. And then here we would end up with x1 equal to 2x2 plus 2x3 plus 3. And x2 and x3 are free. So for this one we'll solve for our vector our vector x, which remember was x1, x2, x3. So x1 was 2x2 plus 2x3. Then we have x2 and x3. Okay, this would split and we would have 2x2, x2, 0. And then 2x3, 0, x3, which is equal to x2 times 2, 1, 0, plus x3 times 2, 0, 1. So we'll call this u and this v. So we see then that our solutions are x2 times u plus x3 times v. And so now let's look at my non-homogeneous system in this case. So we have x and it's going to be equal to 2x2 plus 2x3 plus 3 x2 and then x3. So we end up then with three vectors and I'll put the single vector here that doesn't have any variables. We have 3, 0, and 0 plus then 2x2, x2, and 0 plus 2x3, 0, and x3. So we have 3, 0, 0 plus x2 times 2, 1, 0 plus x3 times 2, 0, 1. So this would be our vector p. This was still u and this was still v. So my solution set here would then be p plus x2 times u plus x3 times v. So we see at theorem 6 working out here where we have our non-homogeneous system contains the linear combination that was the solution set for my homogeneous system over here plus an arbitrary vector. Here we're looking at parallel solution sets of our homogeneous and non-homogeneous systems. So this is my vector u, which remember we'll kind of write this here, u from the previous example was 2, 1, 0. v was the vector 2, 0, 1. And then p was the vector 3, 0, 0. So right here is my vector p. And then right here would be my vector v. And so this is my solutions to my homogeneous equation and I had x2 times u plus x3 times v. And this is my solutions to my non-homogeneous where I had p plus x2 times u plus x3 times v. And we see that it's translated by p. Now you try. I want you to describe the solutions of the following system in parametric vector form and provide a geometric comparison 
with the solution set from part B of the previous now you try example. So this is the same system from part B of that example except this one is non-homogeneous. And we'll talk about this in class.